Hey, it's Johnny Groove from OnManTraining.com. I want to do a little more to the last video I made about, you know, growing up and having the kids and the way it is and 51, having four grown kids already and going to have an eighth grand. I got seven grandkids and eighth one on the way. You know, when I, and all those years when I bought my first home at 24 years old, I stayed, I stayed in New Jersey until I was 39. And that's when me and my wife decided we're going to sell our home and we're going to move four hours away to a better environment for our kids. The area was getting bad. Taxes were high. It was shit. So then I, made, I got a plan together. Gave my job five years notice that I was leaving. They didn't believe me, of course, because I had a good job. I was getting paid well. But I decided I can't fix New Jersey. So now I got to go. I'm not going to bitch about it. I'm just going to leave. Sold my home. Best thing I ever did. Struggled. Didn't have any job prospects, but I knew with my work ethic that I would be able to earn a living one way or the other. So the five years plan worked out to five years. Three months after I told my job that I was going to leave when my son graduated high school, three months after he graduated, I was in Pennsylvania and I made it. Okay. And I'm doing better now than I was when I was in New Jersey. We're making more money. My kids are better off. Uh, I got three of my four kids up in Pennsylvania now. They would never go back to New Jersey. Okay. It takes a lot of balls to uproot your family from everything you know. Okay. And uproot them four hours away to a place they don't know shit about and where their father and mother has uh, doesn't have any real good job prospects. So what I did is I started working part-time. I worked part-time at Sears and I worked part-time at a supermarket called Weiss. And uh, just to keep me going. So from the time I left New Jersey, I was employed the next day and I was working part-time. And then I started over. And it didn't take me long to do better because I know by now. What changed my life was number one, my kids. And number two, when I decided to start reading. And I read crazy. I read a lot. I read probably more than anybody I know, not to mention I listen thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of audio books on a regular basis. I mean, this is, I mean, it's just, it's actually kind of crippling me a little bit because now I'm like addicted to this stuff. And, and you know what happens when you get addicted, other things just start. But, you know, just like everything we grow, we change, we try to get a little bit better. But if I never found reading, I would have never changed my life. It would have never happened. If I had kids, I wouldn't be in the place I'm in because it was my job to take care of my kids and do the best that I could for my kids and to try to be a good role model for my kids. Like, I haven't drank any alcohol in 24 years. I haven't done drugs in probably 30 years, okay? Uh, obviously, I don't overeat. Uh, obviously, I take care of myself. But I have a great work ethic. I've never spent a day unemployed or laid off. So yeah, I do think I'm a good role model to a point, okay? I don't take bullshit. Uh, people say, well, you think you're morally better. It's like, listen, man, I don't think I'm morally better. But but let me tell you, if you are a drug user and you are a fucking, you don't take care of yourself, yeah, I feel like I'm better than you because you're not doing as much as I'm doing to try to keep yourself straight. And I know people say, well, maybe you're, maybe they're happy. They're not fucking happy. Nobody's happy doing drugs and alcohol and drinking excess to excess. They're just not happy. People who overeat are not happy. They're fucking not happy. People like me are happy. People that get out there and tell, tell it like it is. People like me who aren't afraid to offend people, whether online or in person, because I'm definitely not, those people are less likely to take drugs or drink booze to make their lives a little bit better and more palatable so they can actually go through lives. No, like just for instance today, I love my grandkids, boy, I love them. And I spend time with one of my grandkids a lot because he lives close by and he's four. And uh, last couple of days, he's told me no twice. Well, he told me that today. I was like, boy, you don't tell me no. You get in your room. You sit in there now and you won't tell me no again or you won't be coming out of that room. And of course, he went off crying and I went in there. He comes back out and I said, I didn't tell you to come out of the room. And he looks at me again and he goes back in the room. I went back in when I was ready and told him to come on out. Okay, and then I asked him, you're not going to tell Pop no anymore, are you? And he said, well, he said no, but that was a good answer. So, you know, I, I'm enjoying my life 
whether people think I'm angry, or my views, my opinions. Listen, man, like I say, man, this is all from my experiences. This is from what I've read. This is from what I've witnessed. This is from what I experienced since I've been a kid, okay? And and you can make me feel bad and try to tell me, you know, if my views are wrong and I, I'm, I, I don't go with today's mass mindset. I'm not a social justice warrior. I don't, I'm not down with the LGBT communities. I'm not down with the vegan communities. I'm not down with the social justice bullshit. I'm just not. You are who you are, okay? Your character is who, how I judge you, okay? If you don't like what I say about a person, too fucking bad, okay? I want to be around people that handle their shit. I want to be around people that don't make excuses. I don't have any friends that call me and say, oh, my life sucks. He wouldn't be my friend. Sorry, wouldn't be my friend. He can call me. We can discuss things. You know, I get it. We have problems. But the moment you tell me, that it's not your fault, the moment you become a drunk, the moment you become a drug addict, we're no longer friends. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how long we've been friends. Okay? You know, being friends is a two-way street. If you're going to let me down, well, I, you, you're not going to get a chance to. I'm not going to fucking be there for you. If you're that weak to turn to drugs and booze without getting help and not, 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 not smart enough to know that there's help out there, well, I don't want to be friends with you. So anyhow, that's how I try to raise my kids. My kids are, like I said, man, people say what they want. Hey, you know, like I said, I'm not raising my grandkids. Like a lot of people out there who kids have kids at a young age, they get into drugs, they get into booze. And, and then the next thing you know, the parents are raising their grandkids. Hey, not, not to say I wouldn't, man. I love having my grandkids around. But I'm just glad to say that no matter how I raise my kids, as tough as I raised them, and believe me, my first two, man, got a shitload of discipline, probably too much. But then again, they didn't see their old man fucking being a drunk. They didn't see their old man taking drugs. They didn't see their old man collecting unemployment. They didn't see their old man. Well, their old man just didn't know how to manage money at 24 years old. That's what he didn't know how to do. It wasn't from credit cards. It wasn't from car payments. It wasn't from drugs and alcohol and being unemployed. It was just I didn't know how to manage money. So then I started reading. I was one of the reasons I started reading because I refuse to have that situation in my life anymore. So it doesn't matter if you're blue collar. It doesn't matter if you're white collar. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's a matter if you're happy. It's a matter if you can make a living. It's a matter if you raise good kids. Okay? I'm not going to raise my kids to be some in crybaby victims. It just isn't going to happen. My kids do not get to do those things. My kids never got to give me excuses. I never want to hear them. I still don't want to hear them. They don't give them to me no more. My kids know that they're responsible for what they got in their lives. I've told it to them. You know? It's just, I love it. I love it. I always told my kids, well, I don't have to take care of you. When you can live on your own and I'm not paying your bills, I won't bother you. Guess what? They'll tell you that's true. I don't bother them. Man, they don't even know I'm around. They walk in. I don't say anything to them. I say, hey, hey, what's going on? You know, I don't break their balls because I'm not taking care of them. They're taking care of themselves. So apparently as a father, I did okay. I did okay as such a young father raising good kids who raised their kids, who are going to raise their kids the best that they can with good values, good family values. And that's the way it's got to be, and that's the way it should be. Later.